I went to the pursuit of truth, um, so there's not going to be much talking from me because I want to put this clip that uh, I saw on Sky News today that they've put on their website. I put it under the companion of the pursuit of truth, but I'm actually going to put it at the end of this as well, so we'll have some video bit to it. Uh, it's quite interesting. It's been done by Sky News and I think it's Tortoise Media, I believe there's the name, that they've done where they've taken the accounts that all the MPs have to file where they get money outside their job and they've collated them to make it easier for members of the public to to well, to take interest in it. The thing is what I've noticed with Sky News is they wanted to make it all about money and greed and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, that's where their main concern is like having a ranking table of who's getting most whilst being an MP and also on the idea of tacking um, Sir Keir Starmer, who said that MP shouldn't have a second job, and then they produced David Lammy, uh, who's earning a lot of money from lots of other jobs, and then he has to talk about exceptions, so it's a bit more to do with that, but what they should have been talking about, and the, the more interesting thing that members of the public should be thinking about is, how exactly is this money obtained? Because a lot of these companies, it was like Google, you know, Glaxo, Smith, Klein, people make medicines, there's um, Blackstone, you know, all these big companies that own most of, you know, the media and everything we watch and insurance and stuff. What what exactly are the MPs doing for them? Are they giving speeches? Are they giving advice? Um, and obviously they're not allowed to lobby for questions, but the the thing that, you know, can you really ever have power money mix and not expect some nefarious thing to take place you know even non-psychologically even like subliminally as it were you know just by having friends with these people who are in these big businesses will make it maybe difficult for you to have decisions that go against them because you're friends with them or you know they've given you a large sum of money recently and you may be swayed maybe not even thinking about it not like uh, some kind of person who's taking brown envelopes I'm sure there are people like that who are taking money and then that's why they're doing certain things or getting involved in certain things or making certain things happen or backing in a certain way but yeah just it seems wholly wrong that people who are meant to be looking after the citizens uh, the, the members of their public their constituents are abusing as it were their power by making money out of that power which isn't meant for any other kind of wielding other than hospitals and infrastructure and all that kind of stuff and social things that's what they should be concentrating on and by having these major businesses and major companies giving them money that's very questionable so yeah, I thought it was good what Sky News have done but I just wish they concentrated more on the the implications of this money from these big businesses and you know, whether that taints the position of power that these MPs hold and why, you know, we're not changing our world, why we're keeping in the status quo, while big companies, you know, are getting away with doing things that they shouldn't be doing, and etc. that we all know about. Anyway, here it is at the end of this. Take care, take easy, your best and peace. Who is giving what to MPs? Which politicians earn the most? How does business try and get its way? We took data from Parliament Records, the Register of Members' Financial Interests and the Electoral Commission to present a fuller picture than ever before of outside earnings or second jobs, gifts and donations to MPs, as well as donations to political parties. For decades, all of this information was clouded in opaque language and filed away in dusty tomes in shelves in Westminster. Sky News and our partners, Tortoise Media, have been working to change that so we can all follow the flow of money through our political system, now turning thousands of confusing written entries into a database available at the touch of a button, allowing us to tell stories like we never could before like this. Over £17 million. That's the total amount of outside earnings that MPs have declared in the course of this parliament, just three years. 
and is on top of their annual £84,000 salary. And this might be one reason why reform is so hard when a Tory government's in number 10. Of the £17 million, £15 million pounds in earnings made by MPs goes to Conservatives. Now, for the first time, we can sort MPs in order of what they make from second jobs and other outside earnings. This here is the leaderboard. These people, the top 20, made close to two-thirds of all the outside earnings in this parliament. Again, it's dominated by Conservatives. 17 of the top 20 are Tory MPs. The person at the top of this list is familiar to everyone. It's former Prime Minister Theresa May, declaring over two and a half million pounds. Life post number 10 appears to have been treating her well. Either my right honourable friend had not read the rules, or didn't understand what they meant and others around him, or they didn't think the rules applied to number 10. Which was it? This is what the former Prime Minister wants you to see. Out of office, but still upholding standards and holding her successors to account. But away from the Commons, a packed and lucrative schedule. Since leaving number 10, Mrs May has earned 10 times her MP's salary, giving dozens of speeches to a host of different audiences, from American banks to the Danish legal profession. £113,000 for a speech to a scientific conference, £136,000 for an address to the World Knowledge Forum. A former Prime Minister in huge demand, even in countries which she took on as Prime Minister. It was the murder of activist and journalist Jamal Khashoggi in 2018 that made Theresa May a firm critic of Saudi Arabia. I can update the House that no minister or official is attending the investment conference in Saudi Arabia. As well as demanding answers, she blocked her ministers from visiting the country for a conference. Thank Lady Theresa May for her time and to thank the Kingdom for welcoming her. Thank you. Four years on, and a very different approach, it seems. The rich diversity of cultures, religions and beliefs. The former PM on stage herself in the capital of Saudi Arabia at a travel conference telling the audience it was a pleasure to be in Riyadh and being paid £107,000. For almost two months, Sky News has been trying to get Theresa May to talk about her outside earnings. Her office acknowledges receipt of our questions, but the promised reply never comes. This is Theresa May's constituency office. We're just going to knock on the door. We went on a Friday when MPs are typically in their constituencies to get answers that way. But no luck. It is a shame that Theresa May isn't here because she says that the money that she earns goes into this, a company called the Office of Theresa May Limited. Here are the accounts and that she pays herself a salary of £85,000 a year from this company, and the rest of the cash goes to support her charitable work and to pay for other activities as a former Prime Minister. But looking at these accounts, it's just not quite clear how that works. The cash seems to come into this company, but it's not clear where it goes from there, and now we can't ask Theresa May what's going on. We know Theresa May is involved in charitable work, but under this system, we just can't see how much or where the money goes. Her maidenhead constituents willing to make up their mind without the answers. Oh, my God, that's a lot of money. Well, I, I think if she's more focused on doing that than, than being a constituent MP, certainly it would affect it. MPs should be doing their, doing their job and not getting involved in all these other things, you know? Are you surprised people pay a lot of money to hear her speak? Yeah, that's what I'm surprised about. Theresa May, she doesn't know what's happening in Maidenhead. Some are more supportive. It all depends what she's talking about. If somebody wants to pay money to her, who's, who's to say, why not? It's not just the former Prime Minister who's been declaring she's earning big sums on top of her day job. Sir Geoffrey Cox is a second MP that has declared they topped £2 million already earned in this Parliament. His coming from legal work. 
He says his experience as a practising barrister is invaluable to politics and he spends no more time than a cabinet minister would on their job. Flying up this leaderboard, another former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Since his resignation, he's become an earnings juggernaut. He walked out of number 10 in September and has already earned over a million pounds. He's hit that total with his earnings from just four speeches. For a single speech in New York, he was paid at a rate of £32,500 per hour. That's more than the starting salary for a British nurse over a whole year, earned in just 60 minutes' work. Liz Truss, still hundreds of places below both her predecessors, her earnings total under £1,000, royalties for a decade-old book. Also in the top five, the former head of Margaret Thatcher's policy unit and former cabinet minister, John Redwood, making big money with a big job title. As well as being MP for Wokingham, he's the chief global strategist for the investment firm Charles Stanley, declaring earnings of nearly £700,000 from the company since the last election. Here, praising the growth of video conferencing because it means he can do more for the firm. Someone who is obviously part-time, I think I'm far more efficient as a result of these changes because I can, for example, break off today and, and share a conference with you for, for an hour at four o'clock in the afternoon, uh, whereas I wouldn't necessarily be able to do that if I had to travel an hour or two hours to get to a given venue or an office, so I can actually do more. Shadow Foreign Secretary David Lammy has been a busy man. He lists more sources of outside income than any other MP, receiving money from over three dozen separate companies. Speaking to voters, yes but declaring significant earnings at the same time. David Lammy sits at Keir Starmer's top table, shadow foreign secretary for over a year. One of the biggest jobs in the shadow cabinet at a time of international crisis. Mr Lammy has juggled that role with a range of outside work, a radio show, speeches and training courses for corporations. A lengthy section on his personal website promotes his skills as a paid public speaker on a broad sweep of different topics. We're certainly living in uncertain times. From crisis management. If America retreats from the world. To US politics. And companies have clearly been taking notice. David Lammy has listed at least 30 speaking and training engagements since December 2019, worth around £100,000, as well as more than £87,000 for a radio programme on LBC. All of this hard to square with the Labour leader's firm line against second jobs. Ban all second jobs for MPs. With... Very limited exceptions. Neither Keir Starmer's team nor David Lammy's were able or willing to set out if his outside work would qualify for an exemption from the ban. I'm on a political show putting political views and putting the views of my constituents. Mr Lammy's office acknowledged receipt of our questions but chose not to respond. Mr Lammy has, however, made an impassioned defence of his second jobs on his radio show. Why am I here? Why am I pleased to be here? Because, one, I'm the only black presenter on LBC. It's important for my constituents. I love the fact that they approach me and they can hear me putting views that they agree with out there into the public. Some of his Tottenham constituents like having a visible local MP. I think he's focused enough on the job of being a politician, yeah, and I think he... You, you know, think he's focused enough on Tottenham, even though he's making all this money outside? Yeah. Well, yes, because he's accessible, which, which I think is, you know, it, it can't, be, can't be said of lots of others. For some constituents, it's not the radio show that's the problem. Deloitte, Lloyds of London, JP Morgan Chase, Canary Wharf Group, GSK, some of those are, are quite shocking uh, to me. Ask why he did them, I guess, and, you know, does he agree with the practices or the values of these companies? I think if that was brought up for me, it would make me squirm a bit, probably, and rightly so. All allowed under the rules, which permit MPs to do almost any second job apart from lobbying. MPs themselves often point out it's no different from being a cabinet minister. 
But this is an admission that, for some, being an MP is not necessarily a full-time occupation. Coming up with a single easily comparable figure for outside earnings, unlikely to go down well with MPs who could have done it themselves. There's no incentive for MPs really to make it easy to do the sort of comparison that you've done in this exercise. It's much easier for them to say, uh, we've been transparent, the data is out there, people can go and look for it if they want to, but in fact that data isn't very easy to use and it's not real transparency. MPs' earnings information is just one benefit of the new public tool Sky News has commissioned from Tortoise Media. More than half a million different pieces of data about your MP and all MPs now able to be explored by anyone. Tomorrow, we look at donations. More findings, more league tables. Only possible because of the Westminster Accounts Project. And these prompt the question, does what MPs tell us give us the whole picture?